Hi, welcome to this presentation on customer journey mapping. I'm Sudhir Kale. I'm the founder and CEO of Game Plan Consultants, which is a boutique consultancy with clients on five continents. And we advise our clients on matters related to customer experience, customer journey mapping, service blueprinting, and corporate culture. Customer journey maps help us resolve two critical issues that are confronting businesses today. The first is to figure out what's happening in that black box that we call the mind of the customer. As we know, decision making is rooted in several different layers and a lot of those layers are not easily accessible. The flip side of that, which is known as the iceberg of ignorance, has to do with the insights senior executives have about issues pertaining to customers. Uh, less than 4% of the issues that customers have to contend with are acknowledged, understood, and dealt with by senior managers. Several cultures look at the different stages of life as a journey. And uh, journey is one of the seven key metaphors that explain between 80 to 85% of customer behavior across cultures. And therefore it's only fitting that we use the concept of customer journey in trying to understand customer behavior, the customer experience, and decision-making. What's happening in the business world these days is that companies are data rich, but insights poor. We have all kinds of data spread all over the organization. Trying to make that sense of data and trying to get people to act on the data requires those data to be converted into some kind of a story. Brene Brown says that stories are just data with a soul and customer journeys provide that much needed soul to your data. All right, so in order to provide them some kind of a context for this seminar, I'd like to tell you a bit about myself. I like to consider myself to be a recovering academic for over three decades. I have been at major universities in US, Singapore, Australia, and Macau. My research and consulting focus is in the areas of corporate culture, customer experience, branding, employee engagement, and high-end training. My current focus is on the hospitality industry, though I've also advised family businesses, high-tech firms, and startups. I have clients on five continents. Uh, most of them have been gaming companies. And my massive transformative purpose or MTP, a la Singularity University, is partnering positive transformation around the globe. In the past, I'd pretty much consult for any client who'd cut me a check. Now I'm saying if as a result of my involvement, the life of the client's customers or employees does not improve, then I typically do not accept that particular consulting assignment. So that's me in a nutshell. All right, so we'll very quickly go through the agenda for today's seminar. First and foremost, we'll look at what exactly is customer journey mapping because there's some confusion in the literature. Uh, as well as out there in the marketplace as to what exactly is customer journey mapping. Uh, often there's a tendency to equate customer journey mapping with service blueprinting, and they are two very different concepts. Look at the antecedents and the process of CJM. What happens before the customer gets onto your website or calls your call center or contacts your sales representative a lot of other things have happened in the journey of the customer and understanding these is are important. We'll look at the role the customer persona plays in trying to understand the customer journey and the customer experience. We'll look at the benefits of CJM, 
like I said at the beginning of the seminar, it's one of the most powerful tools with which to understand the customer, customer decision making, and the customer experience. We'll look at the common pitfalls in customer journey mapping design. And you know, there are quite a few, and some of them tend to be fairly fatal flaws. To put the customer journey into context, I'd like for you to look at a quote from Peter Drucker, who said that the purpose of business is to create a customer. And therefore, business has only two functions. One is marketing and the second is innovation. I think the customer journey map brings these two things together in terms of marketing. It provides phenomenal insights into the customer and therefore it's easier to create and maintain that customer. And from the standpoint of innovation, the customer journey map provides a treasure trove of what the customer's unmet needs are, what the customer's emotions are, and how to provide an experience that resonates with the needs and wants of your customer. So what exactly is a customer journey map? Quite simply, the customer journey map is a chart that explains how people actually go about choosing and using our product. This is a question that every provider has to answer. And a proper way to find the answer is to review the experience from the user's perspective with a journey map. So it's a visualization of the process that the user goes through to accomplish a goal, or as it's called in modern day parlance, you know, the job to be done while buying or using a product or service. So the customer journey maps envision the entire customer experience from the user standpoint. And the benefit of that is that the product teams get valuable insights from it, whereby they can use these insights to optimize the customer experience. All right, so where are we in terms of customer journey mapping? According to a Gartner report, 82% of the companies out there have created a customer journey map but less than 47% felt like they were actually using those maps effectively. So while the tool is, tool is getting gaining some traction, what we find is many times we are not benefiting as much from the tool as we should be. And a big part of that is because the maps are incorrectly designed or because there's no executive buy-in when it comes to customer journeys. Now, the intent of the process model is to underscore the fact that customer experiences don't happen in isolation. A lot of the times, the previous experience that the customer has had impacts their current experience, and the current experience is going to impact their future experiences. And for each of the, these stages, the previous stage, the current experience stage, and the future stage, you have to look at what happens during pre-purchase, what happens when the product is being actually purchased, and what happens in the post-purchase stage of the customer journey. So in the pre-purchase stage, you need to focus on behaviors such as need recognition or what used to be called uh, problem recognition. Uh, how does the need arise? How does the customer recognize the needs? What are the brands that the customer considers in terms of responding to this particular need? Uh, how is the search process carried out so as to get enough information with which to solve the problem or to satisfy the need. Then we have the purchase stage where the behaviors that matter are how does the choice process take place? 
uh, how the customer actually orders for the product and how does the customer pay for the product. In the post-purchase stage, you have consuming the product or the service, uh, how the usage is actually carried out, carried out, uh, how engaged is the customer in using the product, and what are the after-sales service requirements of the customer. So each of these stages happens across a set of touch points. And some of these touch points would be brand owned. Some of them are your partner owned, like it could be your distributor, it could be your stockist, it could be your media partner. Some of them are owned by the customer themselves. And some of them are owned socially, like the social media, for example. So one needs to understand what are the different touch points that play a role in making the customer experience happen. In designing the customer journey, one has to focus on three aspects of the customer experience. According to Forrester Research, the first one is effectiveness. How much value does the customer gain from engaging in this particular experience? Second, how easy or difficult it was for the customer to navigate through the journey? And third, what are the key emotions that the customer experienced at different touch points along the customer journey? So of the three, effectiveness, ease, and emotions, emotions tends to play the biggest role in determining how satisfied the customer has been with their experience. If the customer is satisfied, then you find that there's a high degree of customer loyalty and the benefits of loyalty are advocacy, in other words, recommending the product to friends or relatives, enrichment, which is buying additional goods or services, uh, typically called cross-selling, and retention, which is the customer staying with you for a longer period of time, thereby enhancing their lifetime value with you. Okay, now we get to the business end of this presentation. What does the customer journey map look like? So very often the customer journey map is viewed as comprising of three zones. Zone A, as you can see here, is called the lens. What lens are you looking through to understand the customer journey? And obviously it should be looked upon through the lens of the customer. Zone B is the actual customer experience, whereby you look at the customer journey in terms of chunkable parts, and you look at the actions of the customer at each part, you look at the behaviors of the customer at each part, and what is the customer thinking or feeling at each uh, part of the journey. Zone C provides uh, a window into the opportunities as a result of trying to understand zone A and zone B. So at each stage, what opportunities open up for the business that they can capitalize on? And more importantly, uh, what is the internal ownership in terms of somebody needs to own those opportunities and to respond to the customer journey, to respond to the customer in a manner such that those opportunities can be capitalized upon. So let's dig deeper into the customer journey maps. Zone A, you're looking at who the customer is. In other words, that is the persona of the customer. We'll spend considerable time talking about the persona. And the persona in effect is who is engaging in this particular journey. Uh, number two, as you can see there, is the scenario. What is the customer doing? 
and what are the goals that the customer expects to achieve? Zone B, which is the heart of the map, whereby you look at what is the journey and you break the journey down into what I said earlier, the chunkable phases. Or there you look at the actions the customer undertakes, the thoughts that the customer has, and the emotional experience of the customer at different touch points at different parts of the journey. Now, zone C is the output of the customer journey map. It tells us what are the opportunities once you understand the pain points of the customer, once you understand more about the customer, once you understand the persona, the personality of the customer, uh, the desires of the customer, the motivations, what op opportunities open up to you as a business? And who is going to own those opportunities and come up with a customer value proposition whereby the customer experience can be optimized? So here's a simple map of the customer journey and we'll look at a couple of others. So as you can see, you know, there are different ways in which to design the customer journey. I mean, in other words, you know, not all of them have to have exactly the same content. However, the personal details like, you know, the bio of key attitudes and behaviors of this particular individual. What is the customer journey? What is the scope of that particular journey? And what are the motivations driving this persona? So those are the goals of this particular persona. Then we look at different phases over here of the customer journey. In this example, there are five phases. How the customer goes about doing research for that particular product. Uh, how the customer actually gets together with the provider and tries to establish a relationship with the provider, which is the application and the enrollment. How the customer gets on board, actually starts transacting business with the provider. And once this particular uh, web product is activated, uh, what are the reactions, what are the desires, what are the motivations of the customer? And then in the last column there in the opportunities, in the last row rather, you look at what are some of the opportunities that the firm can use to design a better customer experience based on this persona. So here's another customer journey map. And this is for a hypothetical mobile app which tells surfers the best times and the best places to go surfing. So as you can see here, the persona is our customer called Alex. Now Alex could be a real human being or it could be a composite persona based on who our customers are within that particular segments. So over here it tells us that Alex is female, she is 33 years old, she lives in Venice, Florida, she's a software engineer, in terms of marital status, she's engaged. Uh, in terms of the scenario, she typically has a busy day at work. However, after work, she likes to spend some time on the water and therefore she is looking for quick and reliable forecasts to plan her surfing. So in terms of uh, the phases of our journey, the first one is to check the general conditions, to select a potential sites for surfing, to narrow down the selection and to actually head to the location. So we won't go through the whole thing, uh, whole journey, but then the important thing here are the emotions. You know, at different stages, she can move from being hopeful about her surfing experience to being indifferent, to being excited, to being very excited. And therefore, at each stage, there are certain opportunities that can be incorporated into this particular uh, mobile app to make Alex's experience more fulfilling. Now, the different components of the customer journey map. Like I said, they come in different formats. However, they will have some common elements. First is the user persona, and that is probably the most important 
part of the customer journey because it is providing you rich information about your customers. Second is the scenario or the actual journey that the persona takes. Uh, what is the customer trying to do over there? What are the goals that the customer expects to achieve as a result of the journey? The job to be done in effect. Number four, what are the journey steps? And over here, going back to our chunkable phases, what are the specific actions that the customer takes? At each phase, what are the thoughts that the customer would typically have? And what are the emotions that the customer goes through in different phases? And for this information, you need both qualitative as well as quantitative research, uh, mostly qualitative. Opportunities. Once you understand the customer journey and the steps and the emotions and the actions that the customer takes, uh, what are the unmet needs? What emotions of the customer can you tap on so as to enrich the customer experience? What part of it needs some action? And to capitalize on the opportunities, of course, you need some kind of ownership on the part of the organization whose responsibility is it to take those opportunities and to convey those opportunities into money-making, customer-satisfying endeavors. Okay, now through Jill Anderson, who is our persona, we'll try to understand the components of the persona. So as you can see here, first is the demographic details. This could be a real person or this could be a composite person age, marital status, and income. Personal details such as biography, photograph, the name. So the personal details brings the persona to life. Through the personal details, the persona becomes a person as opposed to a data point. Number three, the attitudinal or cognitive details, like what is the person's mental model? Mental models is the person's subjective interpretation of how the world works or how your business works. What are the customer's pain points? What are the feelings and the tasks that need to be accomplished? The job to be done. What are the behavioral details that need to be considered when the product is being used? So basically, you need to get to know your target user and we can then use this information, use this knowledge to design appropriate processes and products so as to maximize the customer experience and minimize the customer pain points. Whenever you're designing the customer persona, uh, it is uh, helpful to first look at and create uh, a customer empathy map. So the empathy map basically looks at uh, what does the customer think and feel? What does the customer see? Uh, what aspects of the environment influence the customer? Uh, what is the customer hoping to gain by engaging in this particular journey? Uh, the pain points that the customer has, what are her fears, what are her frustrations, what are her obstacles? Uh, what does she hear from her friends, from her family, from other influencers that impact her thinking? So once you have the empathy map in place, I think you have a much richer understanding of who your customer is and those details can be incorporated and went to your advantage in the customer persona. Hopefully by now, you had some understanding as to what a customer journey map is, what a customer journey map does. Now the question arises, why go through all this pain? Why, why bother with the customer journey maps? Well, there are some enormous advantages in designing the customer journey map, and we'll go through each of these main advantages uh, so that uh, 
you have a total understanding as to how the customer journey maps can actually be used. So there are six basic advantages of customer journey maps. The first one is identifying key service issues with your product and service. Because you are looking at the customer journey as comprising of many different touch points and you are trying to understand the feelings, the emotions and the behaviors of the customer, the customer journey map alerts you to finding areas within the customer experience where the customer might experience certain problems. And uh, if the problem is serious enough, it needs to be resolved right away. So uh, the key to resolution is first identifying what those key services are. Number two, know the customer's feelings. Remember what we said earlier, that in terms of the, the three components that comprise the customer experience, you have the outcome or the value, the second is the effort and third is the emotion. Emotion has the greatest impact in terms of the customer's evaluation of our experience. So over here, at each touch point, we become privy to what the customer emotions are and then we can actually operationalize those emotions through certain offerings or by altering certain processes at different touch points to enhance the customer experience. Number three, define the clear goals. So from your customer journey map, you'll have certain opportunities that open up. You'll have certain individuals who will own those particular opportunities. So now you can have concrete tasks whereby these tasks are assigned to different individuals, different departments, whereby uh, by accomplishing those tasks, you enhance the customer experience and that leads to customer loyalty, that leads to cross-selling opportunities, upselling opportunities, and so on. Benefit number four, foster employee engagement. We said earlier that uh, at the senior most level, maybe about 4% of the issues confronting customers are understood. At the front line, most of the issues are understood by the frontline staff. By involving people at all levels within your organization in the design of your customer journey maps, people feel that their opinions are valued, they are respected, they are acted upon, and that unto itself actually results in enhanced employee engagement. And we have decades of research indicating that higher employee engagement results in lower employee turnover, higher productivity, and higher profitability for the organization. You can use customer journey maps to reduce costs in driving sales. In other words, if you certain processes don't act value to the customer experience, we can actually get rid of those processes. Aberdeen Research says that uh, companies using customer journey maps experience about 10 times the improvement in their uh, customer service costs. They have 54% greater return on their marketing investments and their sales cycle is 18 times faster than those of brands that do not use customer journeys. Uh, finally, and probably from my, from my standpoint, the most important, improving the customer experience. A satisfied customer results in three and a half times greater revenue for from customer referrals. You get more positive mentions on social media. And most of all, the reason you have a job is because you have customers. And customer journey maps provide you with the tools for creating the experiences that your customers well and truly deserve. All right, now we'll look at some of the common mistakes in customer journey mapping. The first mistake, and I think uh, probably the most fatal mistake, is not defining the customer persona and consequently the customer's needs and desires. 
designing a process map or journey without taking into consideration the customer is a fatal flaw in most customer journeys. Number two, looking at the customer journey from the customer's perspective, from the, sorry, from the company's perspective as opposed to from the customer's perspective. Uh, if you do that, all you have are standard operating procedures, which may or may not add value to the customer. Number three, starting the customer journey when in-house processes start. In other words, when the first contact is made with the customer or when the customer first contacts you and so on. Remember going back in our second or third slide, I guess, you have to look at what the customer's previous experience has been what led the customer to their current experience with us? That is very critical to understand if you want to maximize uh, the gains from your customer journey maps. Number four, believing that the customer only utilizes one channel. So it could be your website. No, the customer probably talks to their her friends and relatives. Uh, the customer probably visits competitors' websites. Uh, the customer probably reads articles about the product that uh, they are embarking a journey on. So you have to look at all the different channels that the customer might be engaging in, uh, in terms of trying to understand the total journey. Making the journey on the basis of assumptions regarding the customer as opposed to customer data. Uh, many times we think that we understand the customer when we actually don't. There's absolutely no substitute for empirical hands-on research about your customer to come up with a solid, rich, comprehensive customer persona and then designing the customer journey based on that particular persona. Uh, a lot of times, most companies do not. So finally, as you can see, there are substantial gains to be made by using customer journeys. Whether you are an enterprise with decades of experience or whether you're a startup, trying to understand the customer is crucial to your survival, to your growth, and to your prosperity. As I said at the beginning of the seminar, very few customer facing initiatives have the power of insight that a customer journey map provides. So if you don't have customer journey map currently, I'd urge you to most definitely design one. And I wish you all the success in designing your customer journey. Thank you. So if you have any comments or feedback on this seminar, I'd urge you to get in touch with me. My email address is, appears here at the bottom of the slide. And by all means, for any clarification, do get in touch with me. I do hope you keep in touch. Thank you, bye.